Hey Brick fans, I'm Dave from Brick 101 and today I'm going to show you how to build Lego Minecraft armor that you can actually wear. So this is pretty cool. Uh, iron chest plate all built out of Lego with some flexo connections and it even goes around to the back where you've got my name and flexo on the back. As you may have noticed, it is now the month of August, and so I have updated the background color for all of my videos to a new color. The color I chose for August is purple, so thanks to everybody who suggested purple in the comments, and let us know in the comments what color you want the background to be next month. So first of all, I want to give a shout out to Flexo. Uh, big old flexo pack here. I've talked about flexo in the past. It's a flexible system that's compatible with Lego that is made up of tendons and connecting pieces. And it's what I use to connect all the joints of this armor here. So you can see here at my shoulder and here, this is all flexo holding this together. And flexo actually sponsored this video. They sent me a whole bunch of flexo for free. Uh, so I could build this armor. And they're also doing a coupon for Brick 101 viewers. So there's a link in the description where you can go buy Flexo products and use the coupon code to save some money on Flexo if you're interested in that. The other thing I wanna remind you all about is the Minecraft Mountain Cave. We are giving away a copy of this set. Uh, I reviewed it recently on the channel, and there's a link in the description where you can go enter a giveaway if you are a resident of the United States 13 years or older and give us your email address. So, um, chance to win that uh, contest running through the rest of August and then I'll announce the winner in September. So, uh, yeah, let's get into building this Minecraft armor. So this is, <laughs> this is one of the largest, most unwieldy Lego creations I've ever made. Uh, you can see compared to the size of my hand here, this armor is really big obviously covers uh, my whole torso, so it's big. Um, so it comes into six different pieces. You can kind of see them there. They're all together here, but in order to show you how it's all built up, I'm gonna separate all the pieces. So for making this Minecraft armor, I basically just took the look of the armor from the game, pixel by pixel, and translated that into Lego. So for this one, I took the size of a six by six plate to be a single pixel. But however, depending what size you are or what you're using this armor for, you could use a smaller pixel size. So four by four plates, per pixel might be a better size for a child if you want to have a child wear the Minecraft armor. And you could also do one by one for just a cute little Minecraft armor. Uh, this one I was kind of able to make diamond because I had enough medium blue for uh, the center there. Uh, but I focused on iron for the big one because I have a lot of gray plates, but this basically used all of my gigantic gray plates. Um, so looking at it, there's, we'll push these all the way, six by six, four by four, two by two, one by one. Those are all gone now. Um, so just looking at this, you can kind of see pixel by pixel where everything lines up. So this is, you know, the equivalent of four dark gray pixels along the bottom. But of course, you don't have to use just six by six plates. This is a six by eight, a six by eight, and a six by eight. So you can just kind of um, map out the pixels and then plan out what plates you have to do that size. And I tried to keep this as thin as possible. So this is basically just a layer of plate and it's held together on the back with a bunch of base plates um, and a little additional plate at the bottom. So these are 16 by 16 base plates and these are 16 by 32 base plates. So you can see the 16 by 32 line up with this bottom corner here on each side and then they go all the way up to just one pixel short of the top for the 16 by 16 here. This one is centered uh, here and it is three down from the top and three up from the bottom. This bottom area I had to connect with plates uh, on the bottom because they weren't held on by base plates. Um, so you can actually see this part here is actually three plates thick 
uh, as opposed to just the one plate thickness everywhere else. So actually, take off this top plate for you. So what I did here is this light gray big plate is going down into where the dark gray is. And then I just have a six by six dark gray plate on top of that covering up all the light gray below and some dark gray underneath uh, connecting it back to the rest of the thing. So where you can't get necessarily the base plates, you can use just regular plates to connect. Um, but yeah, the colors I'm using here, dark gray, light gray, and then white for those highlight spots. Um, and then this is just the shape for the front of the chest plate. So up here at the top, I've also done uh, this multiple plates thick. Um, this is so that we can connect all of the flexo pieces nicely. Um, so uh, I actually left some holes here, if that makes sense. So this it has a empty plate area where we'll connect the flexo plates later. Um, and you can see again, some of the white plates actually stuck up and then I just covered it up with uh, dark gray so the white actually goes up higher than it would on the thing. So you just wanna overlap plates cleverly so that this is all one big piece. Um, even then, it's gonna be pretty easy for it to uh, fall apart. Uh, it's still relatively flimsy, but uh, I tried to um, balance this being lightweight with this being sturdy because if I could have made this you know all three plates thick and it would have been probably a lot sturdier but it also been a lot heavier and when you're wearing this uh, you don't want it to be too heavy uh, so that was kind of the balance I struck but yeah uh, if you want to just follow this pattern you can pause this and just kind of count all the pixels uh, and translate that either into six by six plates as I did, or four by four, or all the way down to one by one. Or you could even make them eight by eight if you're crazy and want this gigantic. Okay, so this is the front piece I just showed how to do, and then this is the back. Uh, you can see the overall shape is pretty similar. There's just one noticeable difference, which is where this has the little neck uh, hole there. This one does not. Um, what's really nice about that is that lets you use a gigantic base plate back here. So this is one of those 48 by 48 base plates, which covers almost the entire uh, piece uh, from down in the corner to all the way up to right below the top pixel line. Um, and then these two aren't connected, but I used a eight by 16 base plate down here to connect a lot of this. And then again, use some double layer tricks. Oh, it all broke. <laughs> Uh, and then I use some double layer tricks on the other side uh, to make it all connect. I also took the liberty of putting Brick 101 and Flexo on, so it's like a sports logo. What is that? Like a sports jersey with the team name and like a sponsor name since Flexo sponsored this build. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take that off since uh, so you can see the pixels a little bit better. Um, so, now you can see pretty much all the different pixels going on. Uh, again, these are all 6x6 six six, uh, pixel blocks, dark gray, light gray, some spots of white. Um, so you can pause and kind of count all the different pixels. Um, down here, this whole bottom section here and here is two plates thick. Um, this is literally just uh, two plate layers that are disconnected from the rest. Uh, but this is all interconnected because there's not a lot connecting uh, it otherwise. So uh, some of these plates overlap onto the larger base plate um, so that then these can be connected. So again, uh, dark gray layer up here, but this is a light gray plate that goes from here to here. Uh, and then that just covers it up. Uh, so I did a lot of that down here. So a lot of these plates actually bleed through over the base plates um, so that it can all stay together. Same thing over here, light gray plates connecting from above and to the side to connect under those dark gray plates. This base plate basically just holds 
this chunk of the bottom on. And the thing is, you can get away with doing some parts of this a little thicker than the rest, and most people probably won't even notice, um, unless they're looking really closely. At the top, uh, did a little bit of overlapping here, again with the white plate coming up a little bit further, and then just dark gray. And again, leaving those top two uh, studs worth of stuff empty below here, because that's where all the flexo pieces are gonna go. And uh, now it just says I-101 plus flexo, because I lost most of the word brick. Uh, so yeah, so that is the back of the armor plate. Next up, these are kind of the shoulder guard parts of the armor. Um, so I built just one of each for each side to hang down in front. But if you wanted to build the armor all the way up, you'd actually want three of each of these to go around the front, the sides, and the back of the shoulders. Um, these are a little bit different. Um, so over here, we've again got the six by six blocky pixels, but I actually made this side just four wide because a lot of this is covered up um, by the front of the armor. So I didn't feel the need to go six deep here and that actually just makes it lighter. Um, so it's not as heavy, uh, but holds together pretty well. So again, dark gray, light gray and white for the colors and you know, pixel, 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 not quite pixel lane. Um, you can kind of get this and then you, these are gonna be mirrored. So one side is like this and the other side is like that. Looking at the back here, so this is a little bit thicker than the other thing. So I actually kind of did uh, plates all the way down on each side here, as well as doing a uh, 16 by 24 base plate, which could also be a 16 by 16 plus 8 by 16. Um, so I used two 16 by 24 plates, one for each. Um, and uh, again, then I did outer perimeter uh, two by plates and four by plates here. Uh, even put some one by plates there. Again, leaving this space clear here because this is where the flexo connections are gonna happen. Um, and so these are just mirrored. So the four by is under the six wide and the two wide is under the four wide, if that makes sense. Okay, now we're getting to the top of the shoulders. And these are arguably the most important piece of the armor because they actually hold all of the other pieces together. Um, so you wanna make sure these are really strong and reinforced. Uh, you can see I ran out of new uh, dark gray, so I've got some old dark gray in different spots there. Um, and these I think are also old light gray. Uh, again, this used most of my uh, light gray and dark gray plates, um, old and new. So in terms of the overall look of these, um, this is just gonna be pixel, 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 pixel. Dark gray, light gray, white. Um, so this is a four by four grid of six by six pixels. Um, one of them looks like this, the other one looks like that, so they're mirrored that way. Looking at the bottom, there's a 16 by 16 plate in the center here holding it all together. These sides are just connected with some four wide plates. If you actually went through the trouble of building all the shoulder guards, um, then you would actually have flexo along the side here um, and ditto in the back. Basically, you want to do everything except the flexo spots, which are nicely highlighted in light gray to show up against the dark gray. Uh, and then I'm going to show some close-up of how I did all the flexo connection since that's one of the trickiest bits of this whole build. So if you didn't watch my previous flexo video on the infinity gauntlet, here's just a primer in flexo. There are four different length connectors. Uh, I call them one, two, three, four. Uh, number one, I don't use at all in this build, so you can just ignore them. Uh, there's also two by two or two by four plates that each have little slots that the connectors can go in. Um, they come in light gray or orange. I used orange in my previous video, but I'm using light gray, which Flexo sent to me specifically for this build uh, today. So, but you could use orange if that's all you've got. Connector we're gonna be using most in this is number three. 
Um, so if you can see here, all these connections here are number three. Um, and then here I did like a slanty connection, which I'll show you why I did that when it's all put together. But these are some twos, some threes, and some fours. So if we zoom out, um, you can see how it goes. So basically, you want all of one side to be flexo connectors, um, and you want the side that is not with the white dot to be the three long connectors, and then where the white dot is, that's where you're gonna do the fours, the threes, and then the twos. And that's gonna be mirrored on both of those. Um, and you'll notice also, um, I'm alternating two by four and some two by two connectors. That was basically to overlap whatever the plate connection was here, um, so that they're always reinforcing the sturdiness of that. Um, so where these two plates uh, were connecting, I wanted to use a two by four there, but this was just the center, so I used a two by two. This was another uh, plate connection place, so I used a two by four there. Um, so that's gonna be one side um, and this is actually gonna be the forward facing side of it. Uh, and then if you go around on the other side, it's just gonna be three long connectors on again, the half of the thing that doesn't have the white dot on it on each side. And you can even see the flexo connection uh, points here go a little bit past where I'm actually using flexo connectors, but you're just gonna wanna have basically three two by four plates worth of stuff uh, even though, again, because of stability purposes, I'm using some 2x2s and some 2x4s. Um, so I hope that all makes sense in terms of how you want to add your flexo in. Um, as a reminder, uh, you can just try to push a flexo piece in with your fingernail, um, or if you can't quite get it with your finger, the flexo kits come with this tool that can help you push the connectors into the slots. Um, and then once they've all been connected here, this should be really nice and sturdy and ready to go. And then you're gonna wanna reinforce all of it. Uh, I'm using these giant eight by eight plates uh, because I have a bunch of them. Um, and just really connecting on the underside here, uh, one stud away from the edge at all four corners just to kind of give a reinforcement under all those flexo plates. Um, again, these shoulder connection points hold together the entire armor, so you want them to be really sturdy. Um, so anything you can do to reinforce it is definitely worth it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the shoulder tops to the front piece. So um, the white dots should face towards the back away from this, and that should leave you with um, six connections here on each side that are the three length. Um, those are gonna be all the connecting points for the front part. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some two by four flexo connectors, connect three of those on each side, and you're gonna connect them first to the connectors, not to the armor, um, which is a little counterintuitive, but it's, uh, with Flexo, you just gotta think connector first. Um, once you've done that, then you can take this whole thing and lay it on top of those connector points. Because we left a convenient two by 12 area blank. Um, and then it should be well connected. Um, but to reinforce it, I'm gonna take some four by 10 plates and connect those underneath. Because again, everywhere we have flexo connections, it's gonna be where the model is stressed the most, so we want that to be as sturdy as possible. Now that I've done that, I feel confident flipping over to show you kind of where I place those four by 10 plates. Um, and I, you could move them one down. Um, they don't have to be right at the edge. I just did that this time um, because that's what I was doing from behind. So that is connecting the front to the top. And now you can kind of move it all as one like that. Um, here's a little inconsistency with the game I wanna point out. So technically the shoulder pieces to the front would be one 
giant pixel that way as opposed to where I put them. But I found this just fit better, it was easier to wear, and it stayed on better when I lined them up with this big hole. So it's technically a little game inaccurate, but it is much more stable and easy to wear this way. Next, we're gonna do the front shoulder piece. Um, so first you wanna make sure you're doing them on the right side, so the white uh, corner should kind of point in on each side, line up like that. Um, then here's the trick, so remember how I said this was a little bit um, not as wide as the rest of them? That's because it's actually gonna be hidden behind this most of the time, so that's why I only bothered going four wide on that. So ignore that whole bit and then this is actually gonna connect, these six connectors here will connect to the center of this. Um, how that's gonna work out though, I'm gonna take a two by four piece and connect it off to the side like this. It connects uh, and leave it under like that. And then I'm gonna do a two by two, then a two by four, a two by two in the short connection here, and a two by four. Um, so this one actually is going to angle this whole thing. Uh, I felt like the angle just made it look better. Uh, but it does make it a little bit trickier to connect. So actually, it's good to get that whole front piece out of your way uh, when doing this part. Yeah. And you back that way. Um, starting with the short end, I think. And so, I left actually a whole two by 16 area empty here um, since some of it is not where it connects. So start with that two by four, and then that two by two if you can get it. Come on, work with me. Then this two by four, two by two, and last but not least, this two by four, and pressing. Um, and I actually missed a connection there, so I might have to go back and redo that. So this is one of the harder uh, things to do. You might actually want to do these before you do the front piece, um, just to get them all done correctly. And you're gonna do the same thing in reverse on this other side. Connect the big long one to a two by four over there. Next big long one to a two by two. These medium ones to the same two by four. This one to a two by two and this one to a two by four. And and then line that up with your empty slot on the back here. And starting with the small side, uh, connect each one. So if you are having a lot of trouble trying to connect this, like I am, uh, it's actually worth taking this off of the top piece, doing the connection here to the two by four and two by two, connecting that first to this side, and then connecting all of that back to the top. Um, sometimes it's easier to do it one way than the other. This time looks like it was easier to do it that way. The other thing that makes it a lot easier to do these connections is actually to lay everything face down here, um, because then you can just focus on the uh, getting the connectors in, and the plates will kind of 
just go on from above rather than trying to do this from below and being blind. Uh, it's still pretty tricky to do, but it's a lot easier than what I was just attempting to do um, doing it from above. So uh, I definitely recommend flipping it over and doing everything from below like this. Voila! That only took half an hour. Um, okay, so now we can go ahead and reconnect this 8x8 plate over there that I took off. Um, and then for these, we're going to use more 8x8 plates. Um, you could go all the way up, uh, but I like to do it just one off of the edge because it looks fancy that way to me. To uh, keep those nice and connected. It's really helpful to have a nice large table to work on this on. Uh, as you can see, this is a massive area that's all connected here. And I'm about to make it even more massive by adding the back piece over on this side. So now you can add the back piece in. This is a much easier connection than those uh, front shoulder things. Again, they're all the same length. And these are just gonna be two by four connections uh, make it easy on yourself and uh, put everything upside down. Uh, a lesson I learned, forgot, and then relearned uh, in the course of making this video. Uh, the other thing I should mention is that uh, the earlier version of this armor that I wore to Brickworld Chicago 2017 actually fell apart when I was trying to film this video last month. So I had to rebuild the whole thing just when I added all the base plates for stability. Uh, all right, so we've got those three two by fours there. Connect, 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 and go ahead with your four by 10 plate or whatever you want to use to reinforce. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Do that, and then four by 10, and you're done. And now you've got Minecraft armor. <laughs> Except it doesn't really look like that. So then the hard part is of course putting this on. So the way that I've figured out how to put this on without the armor breaking as I put it on, because that has happened to me multiple times. Um, so I lay it flat on a surface like this and I grab the back piece and I always want to grab it by this section up here. Um, which is connected to the base plate because that gives it a lot of stability. And then I slide that on over my back. And then I grab at the shoulders here and slowly get up. And uh, now I've got the armor on and uh, it's not falling off and not falling apart. Uh, you do want to be careful when wearing this. Uh, you don't want to like bend over or dance around a lot. Uh, a lot of like knee bends if you need to get up or down to get something. Uh, and it's always good to have like someone who can help you put it on or take it off. But if you do want to then take it off again, you're just going to want to do the same thing in reverse. Get the front piece starting to lay down, slide it over your head, and then carefully support it all as it goes down and then it's off and still all in one piece, um, which is nice uh, since you spent a lot of time putting it together. So yeah, so that is kind of how I take on and put off the Minecraft armor. Thanks for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Brick 101, and check out all my other Lego Minecraft videos. And this is a method that I've uh, perfected after many attempts of it breaking while I was putting it on. I lay it flat on a big surface like this, then I grab the back piece, and I lift that over my back, and it broke. 